Hi, Brooke. Hi, Shade. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? <laughs> I am doing well. It's good to see you again on a outside of our sessions. It's always good to see you. Yeah, to have to have this conversation. I'm really thankful that you're here. I think that um, my other clients and my audience will be so excited to hear your story and kind of where you started, where you are. I'm going to ask you all the questions. Um, but first of all, I would love for you to introduce yourself to the listeners, who you are and what you do. Hello, everyone. Hello, friends. Hello, Shade. Shade is my person. I will say that right off the bat. Um, I'm super honored to be here to have this conversation with you. I didn't prepare anything, as we know. So I'm Brooke Snyder. I am a certified life coach. And I, let's see, what else? What else can I tell you about me? Um, I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm into fitness. I also eat as much pizza as I do uh, enjoy working out. <laughs> <laughs> You're like in the most amazing relationship right now. I, I am in the most amazing relationship, the most amazing relationship of my life, the life, the relationship that I've always wanted to have. And I've always pictured, but never really truly believed was for me. And that's something that we've worked on. And that's why I am where I am today as a result of that work. So yeah. Awesome. So let, let's start by talking about kind of like when we started working together, you had a couple of relationships that we worked through that had kind of defined certain things for you. And I mean, you don't have to tell the whole story, but just kind of give us an idea of what you were experiencing in your relationships um, before uh, we work, started working together last year. Absolutely, yeah. I think I had identified after all these years of doing all this coaching on myself and therapy and reflecting and all, I mean, I did a lot of work, but the patterns that I just kept creating were based on overworking and working harder to have the relationship that it almost like didn't match the reality that, or it almost didn't, how do I say it? It was kind of like, I would work hard. I'm such a hard worker by nature. And that's been with me since I was a kid was I will find a way to make it work. I will find a way to make it fit. And it didn't matter at my own expense. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to always be in a relationship. I'm a sharer by nature. I'm the, I'm the oldest of three. And I love love <laughs> and I'm, you know, that's just something that I've always really been drawn to have. But at the same time, I didn't know how to create that for myself. I always was looking outside of me. I was always looking to the guy or to the relationship to feel whole, to feel worthy, to feel lovable. And it would depend on whether or not they would show me that love back. That would make me that in my mind, I thought, well, it must be, it must mean that I've somehow made it or that I'm accepted or that I'm acceptable because someone else has chosen me to love. Right. And, and so, what's interesting was that yeah. in those relationships, you were working super hard and you are such a loving person. Like I have not met a lot of people <laughs> who are more expressive in their love. Like when you love, you love hard. Like yeah. you don't hold back, you express it, you say it, you know, and I've learned so much from you in that way. But with you being such a loving person, th the guys were always these guys who were like on the other extreme. Yeah, I would attract, this is who I would go for. Well, what I watched, I modeled, you know, and I love my parents and they did the best. Every parent does the best that they can and parents are human. At the same time, I would, I wanted to create, or what I was doing was I was creating the kind of dynamic that I watched growing up. And so, you know, these unemotion, these emotionally unavailable men who were slightly workaholic, um, who didn't know how to emotionally connect, who were there physically, but in terms of actually having that emotional um, connection of depth and substance. Uh, the other thing that I worked really hard on was for me, like I was always overworking. So I would always try to show the person like, oh, well, if I do this for you, or if I, if I love you this way, then maybe you'll love me back. And it never really worked ever. <laughs> it was never well received, which made me feel like there was something wrong with me and that there was something wrong with the way that I loved. So that was within, that was a battle that I had a mental battle that I had to overcome in the sense that really just accepting myself 
as is, as and also being willing to almost like question the effort. I, I mean, I spent time on this effort and ease, what it felt like to be around, you know, family members and friends where it just felt really easy. It felt like there was flow. It felt like there was reciprocity and it wasn't just me overworking and, and having to kind of like push people or drag people or, you know, tell people like, well, I'm over here. And what about this? And like, pick me like the Meredith Gray example of like, uh -huh. choose me, pick me, <laughs> love me. <laughs> yes. And I remember there were some examples that you, that we talked about where you would say, I love you to someone, or you would express wanting to make a relationship like more public or, you know, just, you would be expressing love to this person and their response would almost be like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, in my marriage, uh, my ex-husband, he had it set up on Facebook where um, on one hand to our friends and family, it looked like he was married, but to the world, he looked single and he, he was working in radio at the time. So he had kind of like this double personality, if you will. Like he had the sort, he wasn't a consistent married man throughout his entire, both prof professionally and personally. And so the hurt and the the just the total confusion and kind of like how could you do that like I am the same person as I am online as I am offline mm -hmm. I talk how I type I you know any video I make it's just it comes right from my head like what I'm feeling in the moment I say it and that's something that even though I've been strong enough to tell people how I feel um because it's just like I cannot not be me that's something that's always been there. Um, at the same time, the way it was received was never positive. It was never met with, um, it didn't, and, and the thing is about, even though I was expressive at the time, and I, I do at the time feel like I felt what I was feeling, it felt real to me, but if I was really brutally honest with myself, I wasn't as happy or as connected or liking what I was experiencing, but for the sake of wanting to be in a relationship, and because I thought, well, this is my chance, or this is who I picked, or I would see the good. I'm very good at taking in the good <laughs> when it comes to other people, but I would dismiss myself. So I would never really ask myself, like, if I was really honest, you know, do I like what's happening right now? Do I like how I feel? Do I like how I'm treated? Do I like certain things? And the answer almost always would be no. But I was too afraid to, because I, I really think I didn't truly believe that I could have really what I wanted. Yes. And that, that brings us to our first session. Oh yeah. my gosh. I, I actually, I was like, we have to talk about that first session because you did come not believing mm -hmm. that what you really wanted yeah. um, existed for you. And, and, and for you, it was a lot of, you thought it was about you you really did have that underlying thinking that there was something wrong with you. And it, I mean, everything you'd experienced had given you that messaging that if something went wrong, you were either wrong somehow, or you had done it wrong, or you had presented your love in a wrong way. Yeah. And so then when you came in and we started working together, the very first thing that came up was your timeline. Yes. <laughs> I have always been in a hurry, always, always in a rush, always like, where is he? When's this going to happen? Why isn't it happening yet? I've been divorced since 2012. I've dated, I've had relationships. I had three breakups in three years. When it comes to failing in love, like truly taking that, that coat, if we want to talk coach speak, like that massive action of like, I'll do whatever it takes to have the result that I want. Like I did, I did it all. Like I mm. put myself out there. I would just keep going, but I kept doing more of the same, be and well, which is why kinda, I didn't believe, which is right. why it was yeah. hard for me to be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, this is completely, there were days where I would waver. I would be like, he's out there, he's there. And this is the kind of life I want. And, but it really, it, it's, you were the first person that woke me up to being the leader of my own life. That was the expression that really stayed, stuck out to me. And then when you said to me, if you, if this was guaranteed, if you could actually create 
the life you want and the partner that you want and the kind of relationship that you want and all the babies and all the children, (laughs) because I've always wanted to have kids and I'm such a family girl. And I always wanted to meet someone who was just as family oriented. And, you know, and that was really important to me. And that's also something that I didn't, that the people that I was attracting, they didn't want the same things. Mm -hmm. So not only was I attracting people who didn't want what I wanted, but I was in a rush to make it happen. I was going to try to convince or push or show you, you know, that, oh, no, you want this with me. Um, And so you had said to me, if this is guaranteed, as long as it takes, if you know this is going to happen, what would it mean for you in terms of like releasing the timeline? And that changed my thinking too, because my focus was on the timeline versus Mm -hmm. the actual experience I was having and the experience that I was having and the experience anyone is having that's everything. It's not the actual timeline. So my, my focus was, was not in the, it was in a different place. Right. So yeah, the, you, you, you were like, well, I, I need, I want to meet the person. I want to be in a commitment with the person and I want to have children. And I'm also, you know, in my late thirties and mm-hmm. I need to do all of this. And so <laughs> I think you said something like by spring. And it was summer. Yeah, I had like, that's the other thing that I look and I'm like, wow, like I, I had this time, my time, my thinking around the timeline of it was, was almost kind of like, but that's because uh, what's interesting is, and this is the power of, you know, coaching and really getting to see your thoughts was that the fact that you didn't believe that it was available to you made you insist, like if it's going to happen, if it, if this thing actually exists, it has to happen now for me to yeah. believe. It was almost like you weren't white knuckling your belief. And so it had to happen in that timeline for you to hold on to the belief. Yeah. But once you moved into belief, it was like, well, yeah, if I believe, then I don't care if it takes three years. Like I want the guy and the kids and all the things. True. So I True. don't want to settle. And so white knuckling the belief had caused you to settle for so mm-hmm. many people because it was okay, they fit in my timeline. Right. I'll just settle for settle for this guy. And and I know one of the things that I truly want to acknowledge about you is that once you moved into belief, you were committed to that belief. Like you didn't like, you know, I, when, when we met, it wasn't about, oh, well, when is it going to happen? Who is it? You know, this isn't happening. You were just like, yeah, it's, it's happening. Yeah. This guy, I changed you know, my thinking too. Yes. Oh, this is, it's, it's only a matter of time was a thought that I practiced. Right. And The other thing I will say too, around the timeline or the the rush is I was on to myself about the way I was showing up and I called it the whiny model Mm -hmm. and I got coaching on it um, because I didn't, I didn't like how I felt sounding like the one, it sounded whiny to me, the whiny meaning the the model that's, you know, one of the, um, the frame, the framework in terms of like how we, you know, what we think and feel and what we coach on. And so what was really revealed to me was I was creating the result of showing up in kind of a desperate clingy, like I was willing to overlook or dismiss certain things that for me, when I was really honest with myself, weren't, they didn't sit well, but because I was in that rush to have what I wanted. So when any, and this is a a thing for all of us is like, whenever anyone is in a rush to get somewhere, you kind of have to take a step back and pause and ask yourself, why am I in a hurry? What is it about this process that I need to get here quickly? Right. Because there are underlying beliefs that are causing that, that push, that Mm -hmm. need, their underlying wants and needs that aren't being met and you're thinking this relationship is going to meet that, meet that need. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the vision, like waiting. Uh, there was a phrase that uh, we were, you, you had used about, you want someone to bring out the best person. Oh my goodness. Yes. I- yes. <laughs> yes. When that, that was also something that in our very first, I want to say it was within the first couple of sessions. Uh-huh. I was walking around all these years, having this thought around, being in a relationship brings out the best version of you. Like, oh, if I could be in this relationship, I'm being the best, the best version of me. Like this will bring out the best version of me. Mm-hmm. And I remember you said, there is no, you are already the best version of you. And it's not someone's job in a relationship to bring the best version of you out. Yes. Like, that's, I mean, does that, and you even asked me, do you want to be the person that brings out the best version of yeah. someone else? I'm yeah. like, dude, you better come with that best version. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, because honestly, like you said to me, it's about being compatible. It's about having shared interests, a sense of humor, having similar values and and wants and Mm -hmm. sharing life and like building an amazing, fun life. And like that connection for me was always so important. And I've always said this. It's like, well, you can, you could get married. You could have kids. You could do that. That's easy, but it's who it's with. It's, it's the actual person. And so I, I didn't want, I didn't give up thinking or I I didn't want to give up thinking that like that was real right and then and then and and to acknowledge you I mean you were like you let go of it you're like yep I'm gonna I'm on a trip to make create the best version of myself he is off the hook I mean even before you met him you already let him off the hook to create the best version of yourself you started making your plans that you kind of put on hold you started working on all of those things like I love the fact that once you saw it every time you saw something new and your your mindset shifted you were like all in yeah and I think you're like I think that and I think that's really a characteristic that you have it's like you're all in in everything that you do and it's really a very powerful and inspiring experience of you that I have it's like Brooke is just always all in like she's she's in she's committed <laughs> that that's a hundred percent true absolutely and it's almost like I don't really know how not to be all in, um, because that's just how I, that is how I am. And that's also kind of how I also, how I love too. Um, and the thing for me, what you pointed out, which was so massively transformative was when you said you be the leader of your own life, Mm -hmm. you create the life you want. He can come too. And because I was, I felt for so long, this stuckness and this, uh, everything has always been around waiting. And and this is what doesn't work for my personality anyways, because I'm not someone that waits. Like I take action. If I want to create something, or if I'm interested in something, or I want to learn about something, or I want to incorporate it into my life, I'm going to take action on it. I'm not just going to sit. And I feel like I've had this for years, vision board. And I did for Mm -hmm. years. I had an actual vision board of images and things that I wanted to have in my life. And I got to a point where I was like, why is it that I'm sitting here looking at these images and just feeling so stuck and feeling somewhat both hopeful and hopeless? It was just, it was a hamster wheel of waiting. And when you said, and, and also knowing that in my career and in my health, other areas of my life that I value, I would create opportunities. I would go for things and I have created so much success. But when it came to love and dating and finding my person, mm-hmm. it was not the same experience, obviously, as a result of the way I was relating to it, what I was believing to be true. And I could not have done the work, like I did the work on my own, but when I heard you on Stacy's podcast, and I, I think it was 90 seconds in, I was like, her, she, that's my, that's her, that's my coach, that's my person, that's who I need to work with, that's who's going to help me, and so I was all in with you, but I needed to learn how to be all in with me. With yourself. And that took yes. some time, that did take yeah. a little bit of time. Yeah, I, I mean, and we did a lot of work, but I do want to kind of fast forward to the good part. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Happy, happy to talk about the good part. You know, like we could go through all the concepts and all. Like, and we had so many great conversations. So, how did you meet Mr. Wonderful? Yeah, yep. So this is what's so fun for me. I, I can, I'll give you like a little bit of backstory. Um, I had dated someone for a couple months, who you know about, mm-hmm. and there were some things about that relationship that were obviously not a match. Mm-hmm. That relationship ended, which I'm glad that it did. And I got really honest with myself after that happened. And I rewrote my profile on match.com. And I asked myself, who am I? Because I really want to attract someone like me. So someone who's affectionate and warm and a go-getter and family oriented and has this enthusiasm for life and a sense of humor and just like all the things that at one point in time, I, I would maybe dismiss about myself or think again, like depending on who I was with, you know, that, that, that it wasn't right or wasn't Mm -hmm. good or just so much judgment. And I just was sick of it. I got to a point where I was like, I'm being me and I want to attract someone like me. And I remember going on a coffee date and I ended the date early because there were just a couple of things that, you know, I didn't, I didn't like right away. And that's something that I was always good at was my gut instinct was always right, but I, I didn't fully trust it. Yes. And so I remember when this person said to me, oh, do you want to take a walk? I was like, no, you know what? I have a great day. Like, I'm going to go see what my family's doing. Thank you so much. Have a great day. 
And it felt really freeing to have my own back as opposed to trying to make something fit that clearly just didn't fit. So I will never forget. I went to Cafe Nero <laughs> yes. to, to get back online and rewrite my profile. And I was swiping and I was talking to people and matching and unmatching. And who do I see but this person that I grew up with? And it was in the same week that he actually sent me a Facebook friend request. So I texted my two childhood friends who know him as well. And I said, you'll never believe it, but like this, I'm seeing him on match.com. I'm going to, I'm going to message him. And my friend, her name's Leanne. She's like, I love him all caps. And I mean, I, tr <laughs> I trust her with my life. Yeah. And I mean, I know, I, I know this person, like I grew up with him and I hadn't seen him in a couple of years, but I always had a good impression of him. I always thought he was sweet and um, just like just very sweet and unassuming and he comes from a wonderful family and I and immediately when we started messaging I felt the feeling that I've been wanting to feel all this time which is just so easy and so much flow mm -hmm. and I remember being messaging with him and being hysterical and I and I always said that to you I said I want to feel like completely lit up I want to feel like you said I'm, belly you know, laughs. Ba you belly said laughs. Belly laughs. I want to laugh with my whole body because <laughs> yeah. I, when I'm with me, I have a great time. I <laughs> laugh a lot. And I wanted that in a person. And he makes me laugh like nobody else. And it's just, I am so incredibly grateful because for me, I, like, this is what's so cool. I have been looking for me this whole time. Like I'm going to be 40 years old in February and I have been looking for me this entire time, like to feel at home with me, to yeah. love me, to be at ease with me, to feel safe with me, to feel like I've, I can support myself and just a lot of things that I was looking for through the relationship at the time or through who I was with. Mm -hmm. And I just, I wanted to feel that, that sense of home. And what's so amazing is from moment one of, ma of messaging Danny, his name is Danny, um, messaging Danny was... It, it just feels like you like home, like you, yeah. like he's been in my life this whole time, but I had to do, and I don't think he, I mean, he, I know for a fact, he wasn't ready for me either. So that's, what's so amazing about timing and about yes. the work that we all have to do to kind of get to a certain point, but I didn't, I didn't give up. I didn't quit. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I, I'm so over the moon. I feel like a giddy teenager. I've said this to you. <laughs> yes. I'm, the, I'm the giddy teenager. You are acting like a giddy teenager a I, lot. Like his, you met him in October. So it's it was, yeah, October. Now. It was October 27th. We went out on our first date. What's yeah. really cool. And I don't know if I've ever said this. I might've told you before. Um, I wrote a journal entry on the 18th of October and I was describing what was coming to me because I, I I'm also pretty good with like visualizing. And mm -hmm. I was like, I think you have light eyes. He's got these beautiful, most beautiful blue eyes and the dimples. Like, I can't <laughs> even tell you just how <laughs> handsome and how cute he's just, he is the cutest. He's so sweet. And so I was writing this entry about what it would be like and about being in the car. What was coming up for me was we're in the car and we're singing and making up songs and, you know, just having so much fun. And like, certainly able to talk about all sorts of things like no topic mm -hmm. is off limits yes. but at the time I was visualizing what it would feel like to feel that to be with this person and literally that week I think a few days later he friended me on Facebook and then I saw him on match and he's funny he's like oh you turned match into bumble <laughs> Because I was like, oh my goodness. Hi, I'm going to message I... you first. Yeah, yes, yes. Awesome. And I, I'm so thankful that I did. And, I, and I've and i said to him before, you know, I'm so glad you wrote me back. And he'll make a joke about like, well, I had to or whatever. <laughs> He's so funny. He's so, so funny. Good. I love what you said about timing because I feel the same way about my journey through divorce to remarriage is that there's something that uh, Brooke Castillo says, I think in her book or one of her books, she said it was always meant to be this way. Yeah. Sometimes we look at our journey and the difficult times and the work and all of that. And it's like, well, I wish I got to where I am a different way. Well, mm -hmm. like that doesn't make sense. It had to be this way. And when you get to the place you're meant to be, like you in your relationship, me in my marriage, my children are thriving. I have a business I love. I feel I ask myself, would you do it again to get here? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I know. Yeah. And it's yeah. so hard to convey that to someone who's in the middle of it. But this is kind of why you need support and you need someone to tell you, listen, when you get to that place, if you do the work and if you commit, you it's like you won't, it feels like a distant dream. All the other crap just feels like a distant dream. So just keep going, you know, keep mm-hmm. going to, to, to that place. Um, I did want to ask you kind of like after you met and you guys yeah. connected and started dating, it's almost like you st- you went on this second journey. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and I, I try to tell my clients that ahead of time, like, listen, it's not just about finding the guy because a lot of times we're just like, I just need to find the guy. And w- you don't realize that there's now this other journey you have to go through to become intimate with someone to open yourself, to be vulnerable, to understand the ebbs and flows Mm -hmm. of being in a relationship with someone. So tell us about that journey. Yeah. I think one thing that I've talked to you about that's so new for me is that this relationship and being with Danny, it feels very, the, like the love that I feel for him and how I love is very pure and very clean. Mm -hmm. There's no agenda. I don't have any agenda. I don't like, there's no manipulation. There's no, like, I love, this is something that I do because I really genuinely love doing it. I love getting him coffee and a bagel or just coffee because he likes coffee and I do too. And he likes Dunkin' Donuts. I like Starbucks. And when he's, you know, he stays over, I, I just like to do that. And I, I like to do things for him and I like to think of him and I like to think about making his life easier or bringing him joy or being a place of rest for him because I just like, I created that for me. And it's something that just feels so good to do. And not only that, but to just like learn how to be present and in doing nothing at the same time, like mm-hmm. hanging, just being together. So I, right. I had to overwork or over, not overwork. I had to overcome a lot of the hustle that I had around needing to be busy or needing to make plans or, I mean, I'm such a planner, but the simplicity of just like watching Netflix, like I said to you earlier, when he, you know, we watch Netflix together, it's just so, it's just easy. And it's, it's, it feels safe. And I, going back to your question around the journey, I was always, it never felt, I never felt really fully safe or seen Mm -hmm. in my relationships at the time, even with my ex-husband, like it's just, it, it, I, if I'm really honest with myself, and so to go from feeling unsafe, unseen, that something was wrong with me, that the way that I loved, you know, that I had to tiptoe and really just appreciating and being so grateful for the simplicity of like, he is who he is, how he is. Yes. And what's funny about it. And I think I told you this too, is that, you know, I'm not that I'm anal, but like, I'm pretty, I like to put things away. I like to fold laundry, <laughs> whatever, like, you know, just you know, that's kind of how I am. I make my bed, whatever. Yeah. I'm not getting a trophy. I'm not, and there's nothing wrong with the fact that like, he's got laundry, he's got, you know, piles of clothes, whatever. I'm sure he would be thrilled if I, you know, knowing that I'm sharing this, but I find it very endearing. And I just like to be able to look at someone and to really truly accept them and love them for all that they, they are, are, for who they are, yes. just as they are. Yes. And I, I, the enjoyment is just through the roof because and yeah, we don't live together yet, but even still, like, I, I just think that to me, like I've waited my whole life. To, I've said this to you. I've waited my whole life to look at piles of coals like that, right. <laughs> you know? And so I, to me, I'm, I'm beyond happy and thrilled that like you get to be right. you and I'm going to I... just be there to enjoy you and to love you and to be a source of lightness and ease and support. And like, that's the other thing too, that is so new for me in my relationship is being someone that's an entrepreneur and who went all in on teaching and coaching. And he, he is an entrepreneur and he created, um, opened up a business in the middle of pandemic and in the food business too, not just any business. Sorry, a restaurant. What did I open up a business? Yeah. Open up a restaurant in the middle of, uh, you know, COVID happening and just the fact, like we both are go-getters, but also our mentality of having that willingness to put the work in and, and just find a way to have that kind of like relentless pursuit of, well, we'll try this, we'll try that. And mm-hmm. just being willing to kind of like, I, 
to know that I can dream with him, like that's so new for me to be able to look at someone and to know that I have full faith in his success and that he looks at me and it's the same thing yeah. to feel that support of like, oh, you want to create this amazing coaching business and, you know, help people and work with people and do really what's in your heart. Like you could do it. You could right. absolutely and, do and, it. And the difference between how he references your coaching business and how some of the other relationships or the other men that you dated briefly referenced yeah. your coaching business. And it's like the, the energy and the spirit behind it is just so different. It's so different. And that's the thing is it was always, it was, you know, again, it felt dismissive. I felt like I had to defend. I felt like I had something to prove. I felt like I wasn't fully supported yes. through who I was dating at the time with what I was working on. And it's fair. It's such a different, he, his way of thinking though, and the way he looks at life is so, he's a yes, he's a say yes to life person. And that's, who, that's how, how I am I and who that. I am. It's like, oh, let's try that. Or yeah. it's not a big deal. Like he's, he's, I'm learning so much on how to, and we've talked about this before, being a woman, being a female or being me, I should say, I'm not going to say all females, but the overthinking around the craziest <laughs> stuff. We had this conversation recently where he said, you know, sometimes I can be super direct and that might come across, you know, like I'm a, like I'm a asshole. If I can say that, you can edit that out, but, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fine. trying to be, I'm not trying to be, but I, you know, my directness that might seem, you know, like, I just don't want to seem like I'm coming across, you know, I might need a little bit more, you know, fluff or whatever. And I think I was helping him with an email and I said, well, I can, I can do both. I can be direct and be warm. And so right. just like knowing that, you know, it's so easy to, I think for me, this is what I've learned the past, I don't know, a couple of weeks is like, nothing's gone wrong when there's like, there's no problem to freak out about. There's no, I don't have to look yes. for, I can take in the good and I can enjoy the good without needing to create something that doesn't create, exist. Yeah. Cause we often create, recreate what we experienced before. Like in romantic relationships, I felt nervous. I felt anxious. I felt some kind of way. And yeah. now that I'm in this relationship that doesn't exist, I don't feel comfortable <laughs> So sometimes we'll engineer yeah. <laughs> some of those scenarios. Um, and you have done a great job of working through. I remember that was like a two week period. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I told him last night, I said, we were talking on the phone on the, on his way here, we we're on the phone. And he said to me, he said something. Oh, I said something about how a while back he had texted. He said, Oh, I think I'm all set here. Cause I said, Oh, if, if you need me to, I can come, I can help out with something at the restaurant. He said, Oh, I think, I think we're good. I think we're all set. And oh, I remember yeah. reading that and being like, oh my, he hates me. <laughs> oh my God. And I, and I joked with him about, I said, oh, he hates me. He's like, no. He's, and, and I know that. And that's what's so interesting is to be like, I get to yeah. be with someone who just is how they are mm -hmm. and enjoy that and appreciate it. And the other thing too about him that I, I know is that even if there was, and I'm sure there will come a time because this is humans, is like arguments fights like we haven't had a knock on wood like we haven't had a fight yet <laughs> but when it happens you know when there's an argument or a misunderstanding he's someone that will step up and deal with it and that's something right. for me that I've always I think for me like I've struggled I've wanted to be like that and I've said I've been like that but in romantic relationships I would not necessarily do it right away because I mm -hmm. uh, the fear of them going away even though it wasn't good I still struggle to voice what was going so on for me. Want. Right. And I, I wrote that down I to bring that up yeah. is that you really learn to be brave in this mm -hmm. relationship. Like, yeah, we, we talk about brave things. We, we make lists of brave things that you need to do every <laughs> week. <Yeah. laughs> we identified your, your wants and needs and your requests in the relationship that you want to make. And, and you take it and you turn it into your own, you take the concept, you do it your own way, which is totally mm -hmm. amazing. You know, because it's not, I think sometimes people want their coach to like, okay, tell me 10 steps to do this and exactly what to say. And sometimes I will give that, but you, yeah. you've, you've always stepped up in that maturity. Like, okay, I get it. I get it. I need to be brave. I need to ask for what I want. And now I'm going to go home and I'm going to kind of figure out what's true to me and how to authentically ask for what I want or, you know, create the scenario that I want. So yes, yeah. you, you've done, and I'm so proud of you because you've done, a, especially in the last month. Yeah. There's been a lot of being brave, but what's so fun for me is 
again, like the way he receives my questions or me being like, Hey, Christmas, let's What's talk happening? about making plans. And the funny, <laughs> I was invited all along, but he hadn't yeah. invited me because again, like we, I'm a planner and he's not, he's just not as much of a planner and which is fine, completely fine. Right. And I also wanted to highlight, you were very good at knowing the difference between red flags yeah. up until going into the relationship and then what we call in our coaching modality circumstances after you come into the relationship. Mm -hmm. So often women at, on the beginning side of the relationship will see red flags and try to treat them like circumstances. Like, oh, this is something I should just deal with while the guy is basically <laughs> tearing you down. Yeah. You try to work around it or try to love him anyway. Or you try to build something around that. It's like, no, that's a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> you say, no, but once you identify the red flags or the absence of red flags or problems and you find the person, now you start to say, okay, he has piles of laundry. That's a circumstance. I can choose how I want to think about that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. He doesn't, he works long hours. Okay. How do I want to think about that? And how do I want to be in love with this person mm -hmm. who works long hours sometimes? Or things like that. So it's, it's, it really is seeing the difference between the before and after. Before, you're paying very, it's kind of like you have your eyes wide open to what problems are and if, if this is the right relationship. Yeah. But then once you commit to the relationship, you don't sabotage it by <laughs> taking a text and being like, oh, he hates me. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. right. It, it's funny. So I, I love that. And I spent years looking at red flags, line them up, pick a flag. They were all in front of me. I saw them. And I remember just talking myself into being with what I was with like at the time and mm. to forgive myself for all that you know that's taken some time too to be like you know what yeah the red flags were there the sirens were there yeah. when someone says to you i lied and this is why and my first instinct was to lead with compassion for them <laughs> so being able to really catch myself and being like mm. okay is this at my own expense because yeah. i i asked myself this too before i connected with danny i was like what am I, what am I costing? I'm costing myself. I have to start to reject people that come in, mm. you know, dating wise and being online and making connections with people. Because if I'm not rejecting what I'm seeing, that's not sitting well with me, then that I'm just going to continue to reject myself. Yes. And I'm going to put up with more of the same. And I was so done with that process. I, I mm -hmm. of just needing to know like, okay, how can I Re how can I approach this differently? How can I think of this differently? And what can I do to create something that I want to have in my life? And it, it, there's no, I want to feel free and clear of mm -hmm. no kicks to the stomach, you know? Yes. And I got to tell you, we were at dinner and I haven't even, I haven't even told him this yet, but we were at dinner a couple of Monday nights ago and his phone, I think he was texting a friend and we're always telling each other like who we're texting or if a text comes in, he's like, oh, it's so-and-so and same. Cause for me, mm -hmm. it's like, you could go, I have nothing to hide. Like I, you can it's go through my phone, very transparent. And I, that was something I did not have in my marriage and in the mm -hmm. relationships after the fact and the absence of anxiety, yeah. truly, like I have to say, and again, I haven't said this to him yet, but I have never felt so safe and so like his character and who he is as a human as a man like as mm -hmm. as just everything to do with like to not have to feel that pain to and yeah. and I have to and I just want to like for all the listeners and all the people that know that feeling it is one of the worst feelings you could ever for me like I and to know that that's gone or to know that that's not a thing mm -hmm. I'm I am beyond grateful yeah. beyond grateful yeah no that's yeah I agree with you I don't even have I couldn't I couldn't have said it better it, there's it's it's sort of this experience you're having that you didn't know existed I saw it in my family I saw it with my brother-in-law and my sister who have always been the example to me of friendship mm -hmm. and what it means to be respectful in a relationship and that my brother-in-law will carry himself the same way he does when he's with my sister and when he's without my sister. And I've said that for oh, years and I've yeah. said, and same with my brother and his girlfriend, my brother is the same person 
And I just, I was like, I've all, I always wanted that. I, I always, and I remember going to therapy and talking about it and looking at other couples. And again, it came down to other people having that and not really fully believing. So you can want something, but to want something and then believe that it's possible for you are two different things. Yeah. And you parlayed your family relationships, the people who did have it into belief that you could have it. You helped me do that because for years I walked around envying all these other being equally envious and equally inspired Mm -hmm. by all these other couples that seem to have it together or that seem to have love or to seem to feel that happiness or that joy. And I always was like, I want that too. And I, I think what I was making it mean was that it just wasn't possible for me that it was easier for others to have it. Mm -hmm. And so when you said to me, if your whole family, including my own mother, who had to do a lot of work, who created a lot of, who did the work for herself and is in a wonderful, healthy relationship with a man who is everything and more, you know, she was like, I didn't even know nurturing existed. The Mm -hmm. quality of nurturing in a man existed. And now that I'm with Danny, like I I feel that too. And I see that the way, you know, the way he is, um, as much as he's a guy's guy, like he's a nurturing, (laughs) very sweet sensitive guy. And so to know that my whole family, you said to me, if your whole family has that, you can have that too, versus they have that. I don't, it's a, it's a flip. It's just right. It's just reframing it so that it could fuel your belief. And we said that what it's basically genetic (laughs) in your family. That's what you told me. It basically is genetic. You're going to have it. Yeah. And the other thing too, is I also watched my brother-in-law, Sam and my sister, Erica, they, they've been together for, I think, like, I want to say, I don't know, I want to say 10, eight years, 10 years. They, I mean, it's been a while. They were friends for a long time before they started dating and they're married and all that. And so, but what's fun is they, they, the way they, I've watched how they talk to each other mm-hmm. and I watch the way that oftentimes they've, they joke around and there's mm-hmm. just such a, it's like being best friends. Yeah. It's having that just super fun relationship. And I watched it. And again, I spent time being inspired by it, but also thinking like, I so would love that. And from moment one of messaging with Danny, it's, that's what it's been. And and what's so fun for me is he gets my humor. I get his humor, even down to the craziest stuff that like, my word association, like I'll, I'll yeah. associate, I'll just say something weird. And like, he gets it. And like, yeah. that's the you thing. Start too, having is, all these inside jokes. Yeah. And I just, he just makes me laugh just by, I mean, he's the funniest. He's just the funniest, but to know that like my sense of humor and the, and like, cause that's the thing people that I was with, I remember one guy was like, that's kind you're kind of weird or that's weird. Mm. And so when you when you start, when you want to be yourself, and again, when it's received well, when it's when it's met with uh, openness and kindness, and it's just easy, and you feel it, like there, I've never. I mean, I'm tripping over my words because that's a level of communication and ease and joy that I've never felt until now. Yeah. until being with him. And he's been in my life this entire time. I just didn't. Right. That's what's I know, amazing I to me. I keep telling people, I'm like, listen. Once you, you're able to shift on the inside to see mm-hmm. the person, they're like there the whole time. I am sorry, I, I don't mean to hijack you for no. just one minute Say here, it. but do it. After, so my, the first time I left my ex husband and mm-hmm. I was like, I'm done, I'm leaving, was the year my now husband got divorced. Amazing. Isn't that crazy? But yeah. I went back. I believe it. Like, so I, but I went back and I stayed with my ex for, I don't know, three or four more years after that, before finally getting divorced. Now, second catch, when I left the second time and was done and we, you know, we got divorced, all of that, um, I moved into a condo. My friend was a real estate agent. So she gave me one of her properties to stay in. Mm -hmm. It was less than 10 minutes away (laughs) from my now husband's home. Yeah. That's and I know we, we walk around like there are no good guys. There are no good guys. He's already there. He was already always there. We just had to move ourselves into the position mentally, emotionally, spiritually, the whole thing. We had to go through that transformation process to put ourselves in line for that miracle. I was telling a, um, a lady this morning, I was like, 
you have to have a process and you do the work of the process and then the miracle happens. And I can't explain to you how the miracle happens, but if you work the process, literally you get to that point and it just, the door just opens. That was something, well, first of all, I love the fact that you are like, that you went through what you went through. And I've said this before, like, had you not gone through what you, what you went through and created what you created, I mean, you've changed my entire life together we've changed it and i've said this yes. to you before where you're my together. we created we <laughs> created it and it's again it's something so different from having a dream and visualizing it but then also like getting to the place of actually living it and being it and for so long like when you had said to me that you met your husband and you're like well he's not here like he's not like i'm never going to in Missouri or like where, you know, and to just, but when you said like, oh, he's out there, that was also something that I opened up to believing more and more. But yeah. when I would go out on these dates for uh, when, before we started coaching, it was very difficult for me to stay in that belief because yeah. I, I just, on my own, I kept creating more of the same. Yeah. And so I was using that as a reason to not believe, but to mm -hmm. just continue to believe what I was believing to be true, which was, well, this isn't going to happen. And how can, and I remember saying like, oh, I wish I cared less. Mm. I wish, I wish this was something that I didn't care as much about. Right. And so you start to harden your own heart. You're like wishing you didn't even want it. Yeah. Is, but, but yet I couldn't, so sad, I, couldn't, you know? I couldn't give up on it. I couldn't give up on yeah, it. I'm so glad. So I do want to ask about your next step. Cause I know you are a life coach yes. and you're yep. taking some steps I'm taking right some now steps. to circle mm -hmm. back. Tell us what is happening. Yeah. So teaching and coaching, just like you, it's just in my, it's in my bones. It's, it's like a soul connection. And I was just journaling a little bit about this before a call in terms of I've always been able to help other people see their own potential. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I, it took me a long time to not only see my own potential and prove myself possible, but actually create the changes in my life that were most meaningful. So two things, one, being in a meaningful, connected, loving relationship that that's always something I've wanted, but to create meaningful work in the world. And so um, for me, I'm entering back into becoming that, that coach every day that works with people that coaches other, you know, coaches people. Um, and you have a little story because you said you have a no quit, you have a no quit concept. Yeah. So that, that's, I lost my train of thought because I have so many thoughts. Um, I, I was, yeah, exactly. I came up with no quit and I'm still working through it, but because I'm someone who struggled in school, who, you know, I grew up with a learning disability and I was in the special education system and I had an IEP and I had tutors and I had a lot of different um, experts and, and teachers, uh, psychologists label me uh, mm -hmm. and give me sort of this, this sort of prediction of whether or not I could pursue something or if I would be successful. And my work ethic ever since I was nine was mm -hmm. I will find a way to make this work. And so in love and in dating, it, it didn't really work well in that regard. But when it comes to, you know, creating this other result of like, just being willing to try and, yeah. and no matter what, no matter how long it takes, no matter how hard it gets to just never give up and to even down to, you know, all the attempts that I've had with certain things and failing tests or, you know, not finishing something and then coming back to it, but just having that relentless pursuit of not giving up. And right. so, and I know I, you've created like amazing results at work, you know, yeah. in like you want to, share some of that yeah yeah I mean, you so, don't have to go into details no, but no, that's just, okay yeah so I my want to, I want people to see the book that I see all the time yeah <laughs> the, ba the, ba the background is I so I, I have a sales new business development background and last year well prior to last year prior to COVID I was teaching and coaching and I taught yoga I taught meditation I created a mindfulness training for employees to help them to feel better, to help them to understand how, you know, their stress, like what was happening with their, their brain and stress levels and really just to kind of offer them support because I was that stressed out employee. And so I love the business that I created, but I was also by the end pretty burnt out. 
and pretty exhausted, pretty depleted. And so I decided to create simplicity and ease. And so I joined a company and typical like eight to five job. And I've had a lot of success because I've applied the, t- the tools and the teaching mm-hmm. to my role. And so I'm ready now to kind of open back up to teaching and coaching because on one hand, my job is, is a great job, but it's from the neck up. And I've said this before where yeah. it's all thinking and it's all being able to kind of apply the tools and the techniques that I've trained on and studied in. But when it comes to in my heart, when it comes to like something heart centered and something that completely lights me up, just the way that I light up when I talk about Danny, like I want to have that in my professional career. And as much as I continue to light up helping him and working with him with his restaurant, for me, getting to coach individuals and show them that what's possible for them actually is possible. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. That's amazing. I love that so much. Thank you. Brooke, thank you so much for being willing to come on. Always. Share your heart and share your life with my listeners. Um, I'm super excited to have you on the podcast. I'm like, Brooke has got to be my first interview. There's like, <laughs> I'm so, there's like no way. <laughs> I'm, beyond, I'm beyond honored. And like I said, you know, when I heard your voice and I, I heard your story after the fact, it took me, like I said, within the first I want to say it was 90 seconds, maybe even three minutes where I was like, oh my gosh. that's who I got to get on the phone with that's immediately. Amazing. And there's just certain people and you are one of my people, you are my person, obviously I've said this, but that can really help transform. And so to be able to do that work and to know that there are people out there that are looking for this kind of support, looking for this kind of help, but just don't know how to get out of their own way. Mm-hmm. but want it so badly like it's yeah. it is possible to have what you want and you don't have to kill yourself along the way you don't have to overwork you right. you you it's the opposite it's actually upping the self-love and upping, upping the compassion and upping the kindness versus the beat up which is or dismissing you know that, I think that's a lot of people we dismiss our Ooh, wants yeah. we dismiss yes. our desires because of fear and you know, it's just, it's, it's time to kind of step into being authentic and true to yourself and creating what you want to create in the world and having it actually having it and enjoying it, which is another level. Yeah. All right, everyone, you've heard Brooke Snyder today. I would love for you to follow her on Instagram and on Facebook. So Brooke, what is your Instagram handle? Oh yeah. Good question. I think it's B Snyder 11, B S N Y D E R 11. Okay. And we'll have it in the, sh- in the show notes. Um, yeah. So or you can just search for her on, um, on Instagram. We'll have her links in there. If you are looking to really, if you, fe- if you felt like you've had a lot of potential that you've kind of questioned or worried about or wondered if you can achieve your goals, Brooke is the girl for you. She is an amazing life coach. She is just like the epitome of love and light and like freedom. And she's an amazing human being to connect to. So I recommend you hit her up, say hello, tell her you loved her on this podcast because I know you will. <laughs> I can't imagine anyone listening to you and not loving you like for You're real. So sweet. You're so <laughs> sweet. That is so sweet. Thank you so much. You are also love and light and together we will do it all. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So much love. <laughs>